I'm not being in any more situations where I don't want to be mm. to keep you happy, to keep a team happy, yeah. to keep an organization happy, to make things look amazing. Mm. I was yeah, like, you had to care about yourself as well. Mm -hmm. Like, what does Liz want? Mm -hmm. Thank you for having me. It's good to have Ooh, you. What you is... been up to? How you doing? I've been relaxing. You've been relaxing? I've been lounging, just like this lovely little lounge chair. <laughs> <laughs> what's lounging for you? What's what's relaxing for you? Laying on the couch. Yeah. I um a friend of mine said, Why are you always in the bed? Like I always just be like on TikTok in the afternoon in my bed. I'm like, bro, I've been a professional athlete since I was 16 years old. Hmm. If I can be horizontal, <laughs> that is how I relax. <laughs> it's just like getting horizontal on the couch, yeah. like in bed, like by the beach, like just being able to like sit down and rest and read mm. and just chill. Hmm. That is me That's chilling you. out. Yeah. Has it has that always come easy to you? Cause some no. people it's not like when they're still, it's like, it's like why I should have something to do. Yeah. Is it's that... taken me a long time. I feel like now, I'm in my 30s. I feel like mm -hmm. a lot of people forget I'm in my 30s, but I don't know, am I allowed to swear? Yeah, you you say how you I feel. I am finally in my shut the fuck up era. <laughs> like I'm finally in, I feel like I was just so loud my whole 20s. Mm -hmm. Like partying or something to say, or always doing something, sport, yeah. travel. Like I was always on the go, I was always doing something, but now I'm kind of in my like, Hmm. Shut the fuck up. Let's be still. Hmm. Let's chill. Let's be inside. Yeah. And I don't know if the pandemic kind of settled me down yeah, a little I was bit. Yeah, what, what changed? Like, because, you know, Cause we sometimes do, it's something. Yeah, 2020, we couldn't do anything. No, I feel like that kind of really chilled me out. Hmm. And being in my 30s as well, <laughs> I feel, I feel tired. <laughs> I'd be tired, man. Like, things hurt. Like, things... Well, you've, you've been playing ball pro professionally yeah. since you were 16. Yeah. yeah like, when imagine. I sit down, I can hear my knee. I hear my knee. You shouldn't be able to hear your body parts working. <laughs> like, you shouldn't... You shouldn't hear that. No. So, yeah. that's why I sit down a lot. <laughs> you sit down and you're like, I'm gonna chill. Mm -hmm. well, well, before your knee was talking to you, mm -hmm. um, what was uh, what was life like when, when you were growing up, right? Like, you were six feet tall when you mm -hmm. were 10. Yeah. How was that? I've always been so beautifully blessed with yeah. this height since I was born. Like my mom said, I was I was 6.9 pounds, I think, when I was born, which I think is kind of light. Mm. But she just said I was so long. I was just <laughs> long and skinny, and I've just been like that my whole life. Head and shoulders above the rest, but it's all I know. Yeah. I've never known anything else. Like someone put up a little TikTok, and it was like, this is what it feels like being like at a festival at five foot. Oh, you were I like, was like, wow. He was like, it's different. That's different. That's a life I've never known. Yeah. I've never known being short. Mm. So I can't I can't really compare to being this else. tall to anything else. <laughs> <laughs> it's just my average being bigger than everyone yeah. else. I do, I was saying before, I do, I do feel like intimidated around taller guys because like I'm used to being Oh, like, because you're like you're I'm used to being able to look down at them. I'm the big dog, yeah. <laughs> So who's taller than you? Like, <laughs> well, we're talking about Javel. We're talking oh, well, about yeah, yeah. we're talking about um, that French kid that's coming in, making yeah. everyone look like a baby. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think I, mean, I saw a photo of Kuzma next to him the yeah. other day. Yeah, I've forgotten this French kid's name, but everyone's gonna know his name in a second. <laughs> but yeah, that's just getting bigger and bigger. Bigger and bigger. Mm -hmm. How did uh, how did people treat you when you were you know six feet tall that young? Like how did they engage with you? Honestly, crazy. I think the main thing was. High school, like just kids saying crazy things, mm -hmm. but a lot of it was people would think I was older. So I had because like a lot of guys flirting on with mm. me oh. when I was like way younger. Yeah. So that was kind of crazy. Yeah, that's strange. But that was probably like the main things mm. growing up tall and different. Yeah. Just like a little bit of bullying. Bullying was different back in the what 90s. Was, what was your as well. bullying like, right? Because that is like, you know, yeah. it wasn't social media. It was no. it was very different. What were you no. going through? What were I didn't, kids doing? Just saying crazy things, mm. like like lame stuff, like holy shit, it's Bigfoot, or like mm. Big Bird. But when you're a kid, that's like, oh my God, like I'm never gonna live again. I don't yeah. wanna go back to school Yeah. in the time. But now it's like, is this really all you're gonna say? <laughs> But kids these days is different. There's no way I could have made it through high school with TikTok and social media. Yeah, you media. can't get away from it. Yeah. You, know, you think about it, like, the point where you're going through 
bullying mm-hmm. at, at that age, mm-hmm. um, we could get away, right? Yeah. You go home, you know, ain't nobody, mm-hmm. you ain't got no phone, mm-hmm. no no social media account, right? Mm-hmm. Like, what you got? AOL. <laughs> what you gonna do, jump on MSN and cuss me out? Like, block, like... <laughs> Yeah, it was different back was different. then. How did you how did you deal with it back then? Even though it wasn't I'd go as home and cry. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I would cry. Yeah. Yeah. I'd go home and cry to my mom every day. But she just kept reminding me I'm beautiful and mm-hmm. don't pay them no attention. Mm-hmm. But that ain't nothing like a mother's love. I I mm-hmm. thank God every day for having the most beautiful mother, understanding mother, caring, kind mother to help raise me. Mm-hmm. Cause I don't know what I where I'd be without her. Mm. Would you say your mom's your rock? Yes, mm. big time. Yeah, big time. Uh, talk to me about like modern times. You know, you're 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 very much an advocate when it comes to body positivity, right? Mm-hmm. And you've had you know different moments aside from kids making fun of you growing up to coaches making tasteless remarks, right? But mm-hmm. you've gone on to you know be on the cover of the ESPN body positivity cover mm-hmm. to you know, being in Playboy and walking on runway models and, you know, all these different things. Mm-hmm. Um, what gives you kind of that that courage to, to really take that on? I think growing up, I never had a mentor. I never really had anyone to look up to and be like, wow, I want to be like her. That's who I want to be. That's where I see myself. I never had that. Mm. So everything I do, I've got to do it for me and do it for my, my younger self. Mm. So... Mm. Growing up, all I really had was in Australia, very whitewashed. Mm-hmm. So the only people of color I really saw on TV was Beyonce, mm-hmm. uh, Rihanna. I, I would buy Vogue magazines and see Tyra Banks and Naomi Campbell. <laughs> but other than that, that's all I really had to look at as a, as a woman of color. Um, and I wasn't that. I was not going up looking at Beyonce. Mm. I didn't even know what a wig was until I moved to America when I was 19. <laughs> like, I really thought black women would just dye their hair blonde like that. Mm. And I was growing up in a society where I was doing everything to make myself whiter as well. I dyed mm. my hair. I wore blue eye contacts to school all through high school. Yeah. Just, like, crazy stuff like that. So when I'm on, when I'm modeling, when I'm on runways, when I'm in any space where I didn't see black people growing up, hmm. that is, you know, a hug to my younger child, to my younger self. Right. And I think that's what keeps me going and wanting to push stereotypes and hmm. break glass ceilings and do things no one else has done before yeah. is because that's what the baby girl within me wanted to do or yeah, wanted to you see wish people you had doing. That guidance. Mm-hmm. You wish you had someone that could say like, hey, like, did you know like mm-hmm. these things? Yeah. Um, do you feel like it's a, uh, like a, a pressure or a requirement or a burden, or is it just something that you're like, I really enjoy, like that this is my platform? I enjoy everything I do. Yeah. I've rid myself, anything that's a burden is gone out of my life. Mm-hmm. If you are bringing me down, if you are causing me any heaviness, I don't have the time, I don't have the strength yeah. for it anymore. Mm. I've learned, I've just, I've been through a lot. I've been, I've yeah. seen a lot, and I'm in a place in my life where it's like, if you, ain't treating me, ain't serving me, mm. respecting me the way that you should. There's no space for you mm. near me. Yeah, good for you, mm-hmm. good for you. Mm-hmm. Um, talk to me about 20, 2011, right? Mm. You know, um, the Tulsa, um, Tulsa shock. Uh, you're going into WNBA, but you're mm-hmm. very vocal about not wanting to go to that particular team. <laughs> Uh, and we, I definitely want to talk a little bit more about some of those misconceptions and mm-hmm. some of those things. But in particular with that story, that narrative, mm-hmm. what was happening there? Why were you just like, I can't do it? I was a 19-year-old girl um, going into the WNBA draft. And I was, the Tulsa Shock was interested, taking me in the second spot. Maya Moore, the amazing Maya Moore, mm-hmm. was most certainly going number one to Minnesota. Um, me being a very active woman in the world, 19, I was already a woman. Mm-hmm. I was already legal to do anything I wanted in Australia, um, which the age here is 20, 21. 21. Yep. Um, so I already think I know everything about everything. <laughs> and I'm like, I knew 
I did not want to be living in Oklahoma. Hmm. I knew that. No shade What did you know about Oklahoma at the time? I knew that there wasn't a lot going on there. <laughs> I knew there wasn't a lot going on there. I love Oklahoma now. Like, I've, I've learned a lot about myself and being black, especially yeah. in Tulsa. Yeah. I learned a lot. Yeah. The, at 19, the, the, the first Tulsa city. Massacre and all the things that happened Yes, Black Street. Yeah. Like, I learned a lot, and I'm so grateful for that. But as a 19-year-old, I knew that I didn't really want to be in a city smack bang middle of America. It's hard for my family and friends from Melbourne, mm. Australia to get there. That's why like LA was always my, my number one destination. Because it was easier. Yeah. yeah. Um, but my main thing was, I don't, I don't think a, a woman has come into the WNBA knowing what they want. I feel mm. like a lot of people are just happy to be there, mm. happy to reach their goals. But I knew where I wanted to be. Um, and that wasn't it. I don't think another girl's been like, no, don't take me. Mm. Like, people just want to get drafted and get their spot. Yeah. I knew I was going number two, and I have publicly said, do not take me. N did you ever think about, like, what people would think about you saying that publicly? Like, it, and it, it's... I didn't realize people really lied. Mm. People just lie. <laughs> Honestly, people... What do you mean? What do you mean? I've never had media training. Oh. Like, I'll keep it 100. Yeah. Like, people really keep it on the low. I'm just 100. I don't know anything else. Mm. I've never had media training. I don't know how to act. I just know how to be me. <laughs> yeah. You know, people sit down and do all these interviews, and it's just like you're lying mm. to do the public perception. I don't know how to do anything other than be myself. Yes. I don't know how to lie. Me lying mm. is a mess because mm. it goes full circle, and then I look stupid. And then you're like, I can't keep up with this. I can't keep up with this. So I'm just always, I've been 100. It's like, I don't want to live here. Don't take me, please. They took me. <laughs> they picked me. They took me there. We lost. I'm sorry. We only won three games of the season. Oh. Mm. How do you deal with that? <laughs> That's like, I like... cried every day on the phone to my mama. I cried every day on the phone to my agent, and they said, you stay in there. How long did you go without maybe having that support system around you? It was, it was five months I was there, but like my mom came and visited for a little bit. But it's not the same. When you're 19, I want to be around my friends and family. Yeah, like I'm really in the middle of nowhere on the other side of the world, <laughs> losing every game. <laughs> Having the shit beaten out of me by like grown WBA yeah. women. I'm a child in <laughs> Tulsa, Oklahoma. It was a mess. It made me stronger. It made yeah. me so strong. And it's also things like that that makes me put my foot down. It's like I'm not being in any more situations where I don't want to be hmm. to keep you happy, to keep a team happy, yeah. to keep an organization happy, to make things look amazing. Mm. I was yeah, oh. like you had to care about yourself as well. Mm -hmm. Like what does Liz want? Mm -hmm. Talk to me about when you said you came into the, the States at 19, came into the WNBA, mm -hmm. you said you was a grown woman. So I what was that? Was. What, so what was it like stepping on the court with other grown women? I was a child. <laughs> I was a child. I might have been six, eight. I've grown, I've grown like an inch since then. I don't know how. Only I'm, an inch. <laughs> only an inch. I'm, so I'm six, nine now. But I was six, eight back then, just like baby legs. Mm. Just a big baby out yeah. there lost. But it's how you learn to swim. You just got to throw yourself in there. Yeah. I don't, I, like, going back, I don't think I would change anything. Hmm. I would still hmm. ride the same path. Um, but it was really tough. But hard situations like that, I look back and I'm like, it's really made me who I am today. Mm. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't change a thing? I, mm. <laughs> <laughs> well, like, what is there to change? They don't take me. And then mm. I end up where I want to be in L.A. at 19. I really think God was kind of protecting me in a way. Mm. From, from L.A. at that at Yeah. That age. The fact I only made it out to L.A. last year at 30, I think was mm. like God protecting me. That's perspective. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. who knows? You know, we could be having a whole different... I think about me living out here in my 20s, and I'm like, you, you was onto something up there. You knew you all you were doing. What do you think you would have been like in L.A. in your 20s? Oh, I would have been all over the shade room acting a damn fool. <laughs> like, acting a damn fool. We God knows who. Yeah. Yeah. You you spoke a little bit about, um, you know, being your, your authentic self and mm -hmm. not playing into the media training mm -hmm. and all these different things, right? Mm -hmm. um, and there's sometimes when... You're very passionate. I'd say you're a very passionate player. You're a very passionate person. Mm -hmm. I appreciate the honesty. Um, I think sometimes personalities, players like yourself and Angel Reese, sometimes can mm. be uh, misinterpreted, right? Mm -hmm. uh, there could be a misconception uh, around that. Um, 
How do you feel people misinterpret you? If you misinterpret me, it's probably not for you to understand. Mm. Um, mm. If we're on the same energy, we're on the same wavelengths, you probably get me, you probably get it. I'll probably get you. It's taken me a long time to understand uh, people in the, in the sporting world that don't like me and don't understand me. Um, but sport was never my number one. It was just something I was really good at. Oh, well, you jumped ahead of me. I was gonna ask you if, if you always wanted to play, play basketball. I, I never thought I would be here. I never thought, I never, I ne it was yeah. growing up, I was going to fashion school. High school, Word. my whole, I was going to fashion school. I was enrolled in fashion school. I got to end of grade 12, that's what we call it in Australia. <laughs> um, and and my, my ACE advisor, um, career, career advisor, she was like, so do you wanna go to college? We have offers for you. Mm. I was like, hell no. <laughs> you think I'm doing four more years of school? <laughs> You think I'm going back to school after this? I am done. Yeah, I'm out of here. She's like, well, because we have also it's like college, or you can go pro here in Australia. Like, what do you want to do? I was like, girl, give me that check. Huh. I'm pro, 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 pro. Signed my first pro contract, 17, turning 18, moved home to Melbourne, started playing for money. Like, started making hmm. real money yeah. at 18, 19. I, I, I didn't think I would be a pro athlete. What'd your mom think? Wait, did she want you to be a pro athlete? I don't really know. We didn't really like, know the it. world. Okay. Like okay. growing up, I come from a very business family. My mom's a CEO. I always thought I'd well, I do own a lot of my own companies now, but I always thought I'd just be a CEO woman like my mama as well. That's why I would always wear suits and you know skirts and jackets to games because I'm going to work. Yeah. And that's what I saw my mother doing, wearing power suits to work. And mm -hmm. that really empowered me seeing mm -hmm. that as a teenager mm -hmm. and a child. Mm -hmm. But I, there wasn't much women's sport on Australian TV. Yeah. Like I knew Lauren Jackson. I saw a couple of Lauren Jackson's mm -hmm. games, but I never really thought I could make it to make the it WBA to or be an Olympian hmm. or all these things yeah. until I was really in it. Did you, at what point did you start to take it like super serious? Was it when you signed that contract when you were 16 or did it happen a little later on? Like when did you fall in? Or did you fall in love with it? Maybe I did fall in love. I do yeah. love the game. I still love the game more than anything. I love hooping with the guys. I'm still out in the valley yeah. doing runs with the NBA guys oh, twice, a awesome. week. <laughs> twice a week. Twice a week? You're really out here. <laughs> yes. I'm, I, I got to keep fit. Yeah. I got to keep running. And it, it's it's therapy. It's meditation for me. Mm. Keeping that shot cash, yeah. you know? <laughs> I just I just love like hooping with the guys. That brings me the most joy in life. Mm. Taking the business away from it now. Yeah. But... Yeah, I've, I've always loved the game. Yeah. It, from the first two points I hit, I stopped mm. and did a little dance. <laughs> and my mom promised me like $10 and a trip to the movies. But I've always loved playing as a team and winning as a team. Mm. It's Me has never really been the mentality unless it's protecting myself from a situation. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, I just love getting out there and hooping with a great group of people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about the comparisons to, to Lauren Jackson, right? Because that's, you know, um, <laughs> I think that's pretty crazy. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy because we're just two completely different people. Mm -hmm. And she was born into the game. Like, a lot of people are born into the game. Mm -hmm. I got thrown into it because I was big as hell. <laughs> you know, I didn't touch a basketball till I was 10. <laughs> Lauren is really one of these women that, you know, grew up watching her mother play. Yep. Um comes from like a dynasty. Mm -hmm. I would love to create a dynasty. Yeah. I've told Chris, my trainer, I was like, as soon as the, this kid is born, I hope you know it's, <laughs> <laughs> she, it's yours now, baby. Get it out on the court. Get that baby dribbling. Wait, wait. <laughs> what? So you're expecting? At right now, no. No. Not at the moment. Oh, okay, I was like. But like one like... day. Okay. One okay. day I've got a, I got a super race. I've got a. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. get that going. Okay. Okay. Mm. I was like, I would like, love to like, this, <laughs> like the government. If anyone wants to buy my eggs and like start doing anything with that, <laughs> go for it. Other than that, <laughs> ain't no kids on the way soon. No kids on I've got to be soon. a bit more selfish. That's fair. That's fair. Mm. Um, how do you feel like throughout your career, you've been redefining what what your position has been in you know in basketball, like being the center, being you know, big on the court. Mm -hmm. How have you really redefined that position for yourself? 
I don't know. I don't really yeah. think I've redefined anything. You look back on me playing as a teenager and my game's the same. Yeah. As much as, you know, coaches have wanted me in the post or mm. keep your big butt inside the <laughs> key, I've always somehow drifted out to the three-point mm -hmm. line and yeah. have always wanted to do the extra, shooting threes, mm. trying to play like LeBron and KD out there, you know, AI, JR, they were my favorites growing up and I always... I mean, the great Kobe. Kobe, yeah, you got that. Right, I got him right on my neck. Yeah. Um, I've always wanted to just look swaggy when I played. Yeah. Like, I mean, you do, so. <laughs> that means a lot, thank you, because I've actually never dribbled the ball, like, through my legs in a game. Like, I want to. You want to go out there? Yes, I want to be yeah. doing that. I don't want to just be, like, up and unders in the post all day. Like, I want to be, you know, getting <laughs> swaggy with it. Because, like, Drop sex, drop, drop steps aren't that sexy, yeah. you know? But a yeah. little hezzy yeah, pull no, up. I feel you. That's like, it, you that trying to cook out there. <laughs> What was it about Kobe's game that you appreciated so much? Ice cold. Mm. Just mm. that mentality is yeah. not, it was the opposite of the mentality I had. Mm. It's just like killer instinct. Yeah. Just the mamba mentality, cold in the heaviest of pressure times. Yeah. Yeah, he was a beat. He was everything. He was everything. It was everything. To, I'm so grateful. Like, that was my number one player I got to watch growing up. Yeah. Mm. Tell me about the different styles of play between um, playing in Australia and playing in, in America, right? There's mm -hmm. a little bit of difference in that style of basketball. Mm -hmm. What was that for you? I think... <sighs> it's, it's very much alike. Mm. I just think Australia, it's a bit younger. Mm -hmm. It's it's younger, mm -hmm. and then when the girls hit a certain age, everyone goes overseas. Everyone's playing in Europe. Yeah. Um, so for me to be challenged over there, I'm not really challenged because a lot of the good talent's overseas. Mm -hmm. But I feel like a lot of the girls are going to college here now, um, and then going over to Europe. That's where everyone makes their money in Europe, playing mm -hmm. basketball. How long had it been since you've been playing in overseas? I hadn't, I haven't played since the pandemic hit. I was playing wow. in China in yeah. 2019. Mm -hmm. And then the pandemic hit, haven't been back. I've still got a suitcase there. Yeah. Hopefully going still to, got a suitcase. I still got a suitcase <laughs> sitting there. Yeah. Wow. Um, Cause I, I, everyone thought we'll be back in a couple of weeks. It's, no. No. <laughs> no. Hopefully I'm going to go get that suitcase at the end of this year and I'll get that nice little yeah. Chinese salary. But yeah. um, they haven't been open since mm -hmm. then. And like I said, I only want to play where I know I'm paid well and I'm looked after. China was always that for me. Mm. I played more seasons in China than I did then here. Then you did in a year. In, people don't know this. I disappeared, like, after Tulsa. Yeah. I, I think I sat out of the league, like, five seasons. Yeah. And then the year I came back, I broke the record. Right. And that's why, I, straight after the game, I was like... 53 well, people, points. <laughs> yeah. People were like, she, she doesn't come back to America because she's soft, this and that. You'll never mm. have these. I was having big numbers in China. Like, Maya would have 60-point games, like, because... Everyone just throws you the ball. You're yeah. the only import. It's so much fun. You don't have to pass the ball in China. Like, you are the only one. Um, so, like, I, I'm just used to, like, scoring from anywhere. Yeah. And so I came back to the league, did my thing, and the first thing I said was, like, that's for the people that said I couldn't have th those numbers here. Mm. That was for y'all. Mm. I you know feel what like I you had something to prove? No. Not to them, but to I just you. wanted y'all to see it. I don't ever have, like, the mentality that I have something to prove. I mm. just want y'all to see it. Mm. I just want it to be seen. Yeah. Like, it's not, I know who I am. I know what I do. My family knows who I am, what I do. My friends. But have you seen it? Well, you, I like, mean, not, I, <laughs> you have seen it. But I like, have I, seen it. You know, for the people who talk down, it's like, you're not in my head at night. Mm. But I do, I, do the have men, I do have the mentality that, like, I want the haters to see me doing good. Yeah. See me living my best see you life. Your best like life. me smiling in the sunshine, like oiled up in Ibiza. Like, I want them to see that. <laughs> I want y'all to see that. I want y'all to know how great my life is and mm. that you hating on it doesn't, doesn't affect change me your in lifestyle. any way. Mm. Yeah. Anything you say about me, like, because I'm still over here doing me, baby. Doing your thing. Yeah. Where, where does that come from? Where does that mentality come from? How did you start to write? Because but sometimes you're in a place where you're building up the walls and, mm -hmm. and protecting yourself. How do you also get into the space where you're like, you're letting it kind of fly by you, you're not paying so much attention to what's being said. Mm -hmm. It doesn't stick. I'm, I'm the girly that some, like, people talk shit about me my whole life. Mm -hmm. I was like 14 or 15, and I found this whole blog dedicated to 
how I was never going to be anything. I'm a wasted a talent. Yeah, this is back in the day. No, yeah, <laughs> but that's crazy. It was like a uh, like a forum, like mm. Victorian Australian basketball. Mm -hmm. And I just laugh when I think about this because I'm just like, where are all these people that were sitting on this forum typing out these things? Like, what are y'all doing? Mm. Still talking about me, I'm sure. Mm. Still looking at what Still I'm doing. What you're doing. Does it look good though? <laughs> <laughs> no, we're gonna jump out for a quick second. We're gonna take a quick pivot. I wanna jump into a segment called Goaded. Oh. And uh, essentially, I'm gonna ask you a question around pop or sports culture. Love. Uh, Two of my and you're gonna tell things. us what's the goat of blank. So mm -hmm. I'll say what's the goat of, and you'll respond with your answer. Sound good? Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's start. Um, who's the goat of men's basketball? Why you gotta start with that one? <laughs> He's like, why you gotta start with that one? <laughs> why you gotta take it there? Well, I think it's a farm. There's mm -hmm. a few goats, you okay. know? There's a few. There's a few goats. There's a few goats. Do we even call Bron a goat because he's just a big lion? Like he, <laughs> like he's the king of the jungle. You yeah. know, honestly. Um, does this go to the eras? Yeah. Like I think there's been so many amazing, like MJ, Kobe. LeBron, like, I really, I can't choose one. You can't just choose one. And each different one had their own, you know, super moves, super talent. Yeah. Like, Katie's scoring, that's pretty goaded. Yeah. But then how are you going to compare that to, like, LeBron and what he's done? Like, it's just a mess. <laughs> You're all too good. <laughs> You're all too good. Y'all okay. can all have it. Well, then what about on the women's side? <sighs> Is that what, as challenging as well? Yeah, yeah, it's really hot, especially like <laughs> being in it because it's different comparing a, a god to a, a post player. Mm. Like if I was going to choose two goats, I can't choose between DT and Lauren. Mm. Mainly Lauren for what she's done for sport in Australia. Yeah. Like Lauren Jackson is literally the goat of Australian sport. Mm. No one's done what she's done, no done what she's on done. any level. Yeah. Awards, championships, no one's mm. done that in Australia, male, male or female. But then Diana... Ain't no one hurt my feelings on oh, the no. court like she has. <laughs> like Diana Taurasi in the playoffs, game three or four, like there was one game where we were like, wow, she just had her age on us. <laughs> yeah. She, and she up she there both. in the 30s and she's still doing she's the damn still thing. Doing still doing so it. So she can, she can take that for now. She's like, you got it for now. You got it, girl, yeah. Um, who is the GOAT? of rapping for you? So this sounds hard. Because I grew up in Australia and I didn't really, like my first rapper I really listened to and got into was 50 Cent and yeah. the game. Yeah. Like that was like. <laughs> 50 that, that, Cent and the game. I love they it. They hate it or love it. That was really like the first like rap music I started listening to. Yeah. And it was like Nelly Grills. Like that mm -hmm. era is when mm -hmm. I started getting into rap, so. Early 2000s. Early 2000s is, is yeah. and then Kanye came in, mm -hmm. and I had never heard flow. I had never heard anything like that. So I, I had just missed Jay-Z, like mm -hmm. getting into Jay-Z like that. Mm -hmm. So honestly, Ye is my go. Ye is your go. Wow. Mm -hmm. uh, what about your goaded makeup item? Oh, makeup item? Mm -hmm. Lip gloss. Lip gloss. Yeah. <laughs> That's all I need, baby, is lip gloss. Lip gloss got to be popping. Uh -huh. uh, luxury brand. So I'm a big Prada girl. Okay. Prada or Nada. But Mew Prada Mew, Nada. Yeah. <laughs> Mew Mew is like the little sister of Prada, and that's really where I've been spending all my money lately. Yeah. But I feel like that still makes Prada the goat because it's like Mew Mew is like the little Mew sister. sister. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, last one I would say is then, um, who's the goat DJ? God, shiver me timbers, bro. <laughs> Solomon is king. Mm. Um, black coffee mm -hmm. will take you to a whole nother dimension. I ended up at a in Mykonos last year, actually, yeah. like five hours of black coffee, and he just took me on a journey. It was really amazing. Um, I, I, I ran there to pick up keys and have one drink, and I ended up being ended there up till the next day. <laughs> um, and he really took me. That was a really amazing night. I love me some black coffee. And then Kanye Music Boys. Mm. Best friends, like I've got, it's really hard for me. I've got so many amazing, talented friends in this yeah. industry. Cassian, Dom Dollar, shout out my boys. Um, 
Yeah. Yeah, I love she, it. She, All she, right. You did well. Ooh, that one, okay. that question hurt my head. I ain't gonna lie. I was really like the gears were grinding and nothing was coming. That's fair. That's fair. Um, so take me 2012. We talked a little bit about this Summer Olympics. Mm. Um, you you tell the team you're not coming back. You're exhausted. Mm. Um, what what's happening there, right? Because there's a little bit of like. One, you're talking about the the pay situation, but you're also talking about exhaustion. Mm -hmm. What was happening in particular for you? Honestly, exhaustion. Yeah. Like, no one really talks about the come the Olympic come down. Mm. Well, no one warmed me. Uh, Twenty years old. Like, imagine finally getting to somewhere you've dreamt of, like of a child, and you're there for two weeks, and it's over like that. Mm. I don't think people really talk about. You know, when you go up, when you get all that serotonin, you're in the Olympics, you're surrounded by the best of the best in the world. Yeah. And then you go home to your little bedroom in Melbourne, Australia, and it's just, it's just, it's, it's not the, it's not depressions, but it's just like a big drop yeah, of you serotonin. Like a, yeah, it was a lot. So and then it's, it's like, like, you've just got this big what? come down and it's, it's kind of dark. And if you're not mentally prepared for it, which I wasn't. Yeah. Um, my second Olympics, I was like, whatever. <laughs> but my first Olympics, I was not mentally prepared for the aftermath of the feeling of emptiness mm -hmm. and the exhaustion as well. Yeah. So the last thing I wanted to do after that <laughs> intense two weeks, four years of training was just get on a flight and come back to Tulsa, Oklahoma and go back to just getting my ass spanked mm. every other night. Yeah. Um, and plus, I was on my way to China as well for my first big contract there. So I wanted to be in the best <laughs> shape mentally and physically for that. Yeah. Mm. And then the WNBA just, you know, they introduced a rule that kind of requires players to, to it's be crazy. back. How do you feel about that rule? I feel like you're going to lose a lot of talent choosing Europe mm. than the WNBA. Mm. I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe it's just me. This isn't my home. Mm -hmm. um, I don't really feel mm -hmm. the need to, like, be here and play here. <laughs> I don't know, some people, it's, that's their coming home, you know? Yeah, it's a little They get to play in front of their friends and family. But, yeah, it's just, it it's doesn't good. feed my soul like that. Yeah. Mm. Tell me about when you, you, you took that time away, you were like five years mm. away, right? Mm -hmm. um, away from the States. Um, did you feel oh, like I was here. You were, you were I here. I just wasn't just hooping. Weren't, just weren't but hooping. I was, but I was you were a, here. Yeah, I was here. <laughs> <laughs> What were you doing here? I was just, I've, I've got like besties in New York. I got friends yeah. out here in LA. Like I've always been around. In the mix, but you weren't playing in the league, but you were playing overseas. Yeah, China. And back. Yeah. Okay. And just okay. like traveling yeah. around the world during my, I was enjoying my summers. Yeah. yeah. You wanted your summers. <laughs> now we're getting down to it. You wanted your summers. I'm a, I love the beach. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I grew up on the ocean. I'm an Aussie girl, always lived on the ocean. And summertime is when I shine. Hmm. Yeah. So the, what was the, what made you want to sign that deal then with, with the Dallas Wings, right? Because you'd been, and then mm. you'd come to the Dallas Wings, and that felt like a really good pocket for you. Yeah. You know? Like, you, 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 you bald. <laughs> I'm going to be, I'm going to be so honest. I did not, like, I didn't appreciate my time in Dallas enough. Mm. When I look back on it, I don't know if it's because I was young, it just went... Like that, it was over, whatever. I was so needed to get out of there as well. Yeah. I only went back um, because I was a super amazing coach, Fred. Uh, he would email me, text me at least once a week for like three years trying to get me wow. back. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Email, WhatsApp, text, like anything. Anything. Trying you, to like, you're the best Liz, player in the up? world. Like come back. I'm going to look after you. Mm. The same things aren't going to happen. Like we will look after you. And I trusted him, mm -hmm. um, and I love him a lot. And I've never had a coach like him. Um, and it was a great season. We had a fantastic time, but he got fired mm -hmm. <laughs> um, outside of our locker room. Mm -hmm. After we, we were on a 10-game losing streak, that wasn't the answer. Um, and then that whole situation, I just lost a lot of respect for people at that organization. Mm -hmm. But it's a great city. I love Dallas. You love Dallas. I yeah. wish I did a lot more. Exploring. When you were there. Um, I was reading a Forbes article the other day about the best cities to live in um, in America, reflecting like how much money you make mm -hmm. and like the tax situation over in Texas is where I need to be. <laughs> so if you catch me back out in Dallas, don't worry about it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just okay. there minding my business. Yeah, you're just there kicking it. <laughs>
Oh, uh, what was it about having a coach like that 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 made you feel comfortable and made you feel like this was the system that you wanted to be in? It's just I I do everything with love. I've, mm. I've, I've realized that I put a lot of my heart and soul mm. and myself into what I do. So I need to be. I need to feel protected, I need to feel loved, and I need to feel respected in everything I do. Yeah. Um, everyone I work with knows that. Mm. Very open, I speak openly about everything. So uh, my people around me get it. Um, in the sporting world, it's not really like that. And that's yeah. fine. I feel like it's softening now a little bit. Because um, so? we're human. Mm. I think the whole shut up and be an athlete, shut up and dribble, shut up and do whatever you're doing is kind of melting away. And people are being reminded that we're actually human. Yeah. We're actually functioning humans yeah. um, with hearts and souls and bodies and lives. <laughs> yeah, and people want to feel good with what they do. Yeah. So if I'm in a situation and y'all not making me feel good, I, I won't stay. Yeah. Mm. I feel that. Mm -hmm. While you were there, you did play with Skylar Diggins Smith. I and, did. And I, I feel like y'all had such a great chemistry yeah. on the court. What was it about? playing with Skylar that you felt like your game just, it just made sense. She's Leo. <laughs> she matches my fire. I, she matches my fire. And that, honestly, that's another girl that gets very, you know, talked about and misunderstood. Mm -hmm. um, but she's an amazing woman, amazing mm -hmm. mother, amazing hooper, um, a beautiful soul. And I, I, I would love to play with her again. Yeah. I, I talk with my girl Z. She's playing here in LA this season. And we we fantasize about running it back. We like Sky and 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 all of us all together because we really it was a really special time in Dallas. We didn't even realize mm -hmm. it's like, it like I'm just me in my thirties being like oh looking back on <laughs> looking that back one like team. Like, I'm an old ago. I'm an old head now. I'm such an old head. Like when that long ago. <laughs> Lord, it feel like it, but it was a really special season. Even minus like records or whatever I did on the court, just mm. off the court, it was a really, a really great group, and I, I made a lot of friends for life mm. in that team. Yeah. Well, maybe we're manifesting something here today. Ooh, we'll see. We're we'll something see. Here today. Um, I know that you know you said the records aren't such a big deal, but mm. it's got to feel good to have your name in in the history books. It's like, cool. In the record books, like that's got to be pretty dope. It's cool. I'm not gonna <laughs> lie. It's cool. Like. That's the things you can never take away from me is breaking that record or being the first woman to dunk in the Olympics. Like, it's a cool little flex. <laughs> like, yeah, look at my Wikipedia. There's some shit on there. Yeah. But it's also, I don't wear like a badge of honor. Like, I'm not gonna You're get that. You're not to, going around like flexing it. I'm not getting to heaven's door and being like, well, I was the first woman to dunk. Like, let me in. <laughs> like, I don't really, I don't really think these like achievements like really reflect on who I am as a human. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's just cool shit I did. Yeah. Yeah. I love that though. I think that's super dope. Like that you could be in a space where it's not everything to you. It's great that it happened, but it's not Liz the person. No. Hmm. I'm just a girly who hooped a little, you know, yeah. and did a lot of cool things. But I also do a lot hmm. of other amazing things at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. You mentioned that you felt like 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 Skylar, you and Skylar, because you are vocal, mm -hmm. um, that that folks like to talk about that. Do you mm -hmm. feel that that has more to do with just you being vocal and, and mm -hmm. women of color or, or is it because you're women and you're not men? Yeah, a lot of me is just like, people just hate a woman speaking on issues. <laughs> like, <laughs> people just don't like it. It's just like, shut up. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of people think we should just be happy with what we have. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not that person. I am a greedy bitch and I wanna keep working for everything I want in life. Um, and if you're gonna tell me I can't have it or I don't deserve it, fine. I'm gonna go somewhere else mm. and work even harder to get what I want. Um, and also, everything I've spoken on, it's not like I've, I've sat there and stayed in these situations and bitched about it. Mm -hmm. You know how people stay in situations yeah. to just keep talking badly about it? Mm -hmm. I'll speak my truth and then I'll leave and I'll move on. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I don't like the pay here, so I, I have and a handful. I did a lot of things about it. You know, <laughs> I, I, I DJ, I model, I have a handful of businesses. Um, and I, I, I'm so thankful that coming here at 19 and realizing that I, I do need to do more with my life other than just play basketball. If I, <laughs> if I want to, you know, reach the goals that I want to, I want to get to, I'm going to have to do more. Yeah. Um, yeah. Hmm. So we, 
we know about the, the basketball side and, and where that came from. And we mm-hmm. know about the fashion because you talked about like, hey, I was trying to go do this. Mm-hmm. Where did the DJ part come from and the music come from? Mm-hmm. Like, when did you start to really lean into that? So my dad was a DJ and my mom was a dancer. Wow. And that's how they met. Wow. I was literally like made in the club. Yeah. There's a high... <laughs> There's a high chance that I was actually conceived in the nightclub. <laughs> so that, it's it's in my veins. Yeah. My mom raised me on house music, Ministry of Sound. I had every album from like five years old playing mm. house music. And it's just all I've ever known mm. and pop music. And then rap came into it when yeah. I was a teenager. Um, so it's just always been, it's always been, my goal was to be involved in music somehow. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't get the confidence to really start learning and like go for it when I was in, until I was like mid twenties. Yeah. So I've been DJing since I was 24, 25. Oh, so you, you, this ain't new to you. It's not new, but I don't have my confidence where it needs to be. Yeah. Like I can walk into any basketball court and be like, oh. What's up? <laughs> like, you know, it's me, baby. Like, what you think this is? Yeah, like, yeah. But I'll go to a DJ set and be like overthinking mm. and stressed and be like, oh my God, there's a crowd. Mm. Like, yeah, I still gotta get my hours up, yeah. but I've been doing it for a little a little minute. Good, that's <laughs> crazy. So what are your favorite sets then? Like, where do you like to play? What, what, where do you like to play where you feel most comfortable? That's the thing, I gotta, I gotta not be comfortable mm. and I gotta branch out. Yeah. You know, I've only played a few festivals out here in America. I've never played in Europe, but that's my, my vision mm-hmm. and my goals for this year is mm-hmm. to line up some European gigs, get my face out there more in America. Yeah. You know, I've done everything I've wanted to do in Australia pretty much, um, except for like my own major tours. Mm-hmm. But that's all in the future. It's all in the future. Mm-hmm. Now, now, you know, DJs have DJ names. Yeah. So I, I'm curious to know if you can come up with a DJ no. name and we're just going by Liz, which is fine too. Just, just Liz curious. the Cambage, <laughs> just me. I feel like it's, I am who I am. People want to see the name and know who it is. I've been DJing with that with my name yeah. for like six years now. I don't think I'm gonna come out and be like DJ Big Baby on the on the decks. Like I don't know, like what would I change my name to? Like who, what is my DJ name gonna be? Like I'm not about to sit down and have that little you know marketing meeting about what my DJ yeah. name should be. I'm right. me. I'm Liz. Yeah, is what it is. Big Lizzie on the ones and twos. <laughs> I'm gonna hold you to that to that party. I want that Let's go. Party. I'm Liz, always ready. House, let's go Any vibe. excuse, I got okay. y'all. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I I gotta ask you. You know, we've talked about a lot of the players that you played with. We've, mm. we've reminisced a little bit. Will we ever see you back in the WNBA? Change that CBA, baby. Mm. Change that CBA. Mm. Up the score. Mm. You got up the score. You got girls making millions in college now just mm. off their likeliness. Mm-hmm. How are you going to have a girl in college making millions come to the WNBA hmm. and want to sit there and work her ass off for $50,000 for a whole WNBA season? Yeah. That's a rookie salary. Hmm. And that was the major reason I sat out for so long because I was like, I'm not coming back for this rookie salary. Yeah. I don't know if any, everyone else can get away with that. Hmm. I was just special. I'm not from here. I'm different. Um, but you know, it is a it's, it is a lot of girls' hopes and dreams to make it to the W, and I just want it to be in the best place where I'm like, I want my daughter to play in that league. Like, mm-hmm. I want her to be great, um, and I know she's being treated the best because you're the best. These are the best women in the world hooping. Yeah. They should be treated like the best. Absolutely, mm-hmm. absolutely. Uh, well, Liz, if it's all right with you, we're gonna take some questions. Oh, okay, okay, yes. okay. Show of hands. Who's got some questions for Liz? Hi, I'm Carrie, and uh, I was wondering, based, you were talking about being bullied when you were younger based mm-hmm. on your size, and it sounded like that led you to embrace body positivity in a big way, and I noticed you launched an OnlyFans, so I was wondering if you could discuss like how that ties in. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, um, there was, the streets was calling. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> guys, like, there, there was a market for it. People were asking for it, and... I, if anything, it's made me chill out more on Instagram and made my Instagram a little bit more family friendly. Mm. And I can put, you know, my bikini, my foot content uh, on OnlyFans. <laughs> that's that's like a ninety percent of my OnlyFans is is feet content. And uh, yeah, 
Word. And every time I take a photo of my foot and I put it, I upload it, send it to the internet, I think about all the boys that used to chase me around, calling me Bigfoot, calling me ugly, calling me this and that, because this beautiful big body is making me big money. And I <laughs> am forever awesome. grateful. Absolutely. So it is, it is like, I don't know if it's ego or just like a little pat on the back. Cause like, I, it does empower me mm. to know that just like, I'm making money off my toes. <laughs> <laughs> that's what, that was not where that I sound, thought we were going, but that's like, fine. <laughs> I don't know if that sounds crazy, but it, it's empowering for me because this is something, you know, for half my life, I was so bullied and it, it made me hate myself, you know? Um, so it's just a bit of self-love, I feel. Hmm. Thank you Thank for your you. question. Uh, we can pass the mic back to the middle there. Let's have you introduce yourself and ask your question. Uh, my name is Laís. Uh, nice meeting you, Laís, in person. Lovely to meet you. My, my question is, uh, once in Tulsa, you've mentioned that you didn't want to be seen as a franchise. Mm. That mm. you'd like to see be seen as like someone who comes, plays, shows uh. your game and how people can learn from, from it. Mm. My question is, how can we share with uh, upcoming athletes mm this message of not being seen as a franchise, but mm -hmm. more themselves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, that was a great question. You you reminded me that that was my major thing is I was 19 and, and Tulsa wanted to make me the franchise player, the mm -hmm. face of the organization. Oh, yeah. I was 19. Mm -hmm. I was a teenager and even the Australian Olympic team painted me as a savior. You know, you're the one that's gonna get us the gold medal. I was a teenager. Mm -hmm. I was a teenager and you wanted me to be your savior as a teenager, you better educate me a little more, like give me a good role model, give me a good mentor. And that was the that was my major reason of why I didn't really want to go to Tulsa and I wanted to come to LA because mm. I wanted to play with Candace Parker ah, so badly. Okay. I wanted, you wanted her, a mentor. You I wanted, wanted that mentor. I really, I really craved and wanted that mentor um, as a teenager and I, I never got it, never reached it, but I became my own in a way, I guess. Yeah. But um. Yeah, I, I, I feel like we put a lot of pressure on these young girls without really bracing them for the real impact as it is to be a professional or an Olympian. Um, and that's, that's something, when I go into a new team, I really look after the babies. Mm. You know, all my rookies are still like really close with me mm -hmm. um, because I'm all about protecting the youth the next one, That's a, it's about who's next. It's not, a, it's not even about me anymore. I don't think this is about me. For me, it's about who's next. And I don't want any other female player to go through the things I went through as, a, as someone trying to just do their best. Absolutely, mm. absolutely. Thank you so much for your question. Thank you. uh, we're gonna take our next question here. Hi Liz, I'm Nick. Hey, Nick. Um, my question, obviously you've been successful in like a lot of different lanes. I was wondering in terms of the improvement process, mm -hmm. what are like some similarities and differences mm -hmm. in improving in like basketball versus music? Mm. Everything's about getting your hours in. Mm. Everything is about hours. I think, is it 10,000 hours? 10, hours? They say it's 10,000 10, hours to mm -hmm. master a, a task or a, what's the word I'm looking for? A mm -hmm. talent, mm -hmm. talent. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Um, so it's all about hours. If you're not, if you're just sitting there thinking about it, it's probably not going to happen unless you get out there and you're practicing it and you're putting in the work. Or I am DJing in clubs. Mm -hmm. You know, my confidence isn't going to get better. At me mixing in my bedroom. Yeah, you got to. I got to put myself mix. out there with everything. You know, your drawings aren't going to get good unless you keep drawing. Um, so everything is about putting your hours in. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, thank you for thank your you. question. If you could pass the mic behind you. Hi, my name is Joel, and um, I just wanted to ask, um, how do you see um, uh, Brittany Griner um, going back uh, to court this season? Mm -hmm. She's back, baby. <laughs> BG is back BG and is hooping back. on her home soil, and it's just, it's just amazing to see her home and safe. Um, what she went through, I really wouldn't wish upon a single soul in this whole world. Mm -hmm. Um, and I hope everyone else in this world who is wrongly detained is freed and home soon. Um, but I think 
what happened to Britney really shone a light on what's really going on in the WNBA and why we are all running off to war-torn countries to go hoop. Mm. I was just in Israel um, and I've never had to run to a bomb shelter in my life. I was in a bomb shelter two weeks ago. Wow. And that's just, that's just their normal way of living. Every, every new apartment has a bomb room in the apartments. It's so crazy to me, but it was such an eye-opening experience um, and made me really put in check like my own issues and my own life. Um, but we shouldn't have to be leaving the country to, to you know, fill our bank accounts of what we do. Hmm. You should just be able to stay at home and be happy, you know? Yeah, totally. But this is the pinnacle right here. This is the best of the best right here. I don't understand. Yeah. I don't understand. Thank you so much for your question. Hi, Liz. Hi. Hey, this is Buddha. Hey, Buddha. <laughs> you talked about how you like to run with the boys to stay fit mm -hmm. and how you demand your respect. And you still, you, you like that paper. You trying to get that paper. Mm -hmm. How does that compare the WNBA with the NBA? Hmm. In you comparison. Com that's a different beast. You, it's hard to compare. You know, the, the income, the, the reach that the NBA has is not even comparable to the WNBA. Clearly, um, it's, it's two different beasts. But I think the issue with the WNBA really does come down to marketing. Um, I think the biggest thing to come away from this whole, the NLI deals and the mm -hmm. college is that a lot of these girls are just making money off their own image. And I've said for a long time, I think the WBA sells like five of the players jerseys through the Nike store. Mm. If you could really hone into selling players images mm. for a long time, they didn't even have like the numbers on the front of the Jersey mm. for me in my marketing brain. I'm like, you can see the team, but you've got no idea who they're repping. Ooh, yes, yeah. And fans want to rep their favorite player. Mm -hmm. As long as their favorite team, they want to rep their player. Um, so having more merchandise that people can buy and rep is just the easiest way to make money. I did that with myself, with my own logo. Um, it's just, it, this is, I just look at the league and I just see so, so many marketable women um, and just so many avenues that they could take that it's just, I don't know. What would I know? I'm not a marketing major. I don't know. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Uh, y'all, thank y'all so much for your questions. Thank you so much for joining us. Liz, thank you for joining us. Oh, thank you for on having me. Absolutely. Thank you for the great questions. I just want to hug everyone.